May our thoughts and our words be pleasing to you, O Lord. Amen. One of the certain things about the people of Israel is that they were very consistent. When things were going badly, they could be relied upon to turn to God. And when things went well, they were just as consistent in forgetting all about God and going their own way. And then when something went bad again, back to God. They were very consistent. I recall during the World War II, things were not always going well in England and there'd be a call for a national day of prayer and the churches would be crowded. And then when it was all over, there was a similar call for a Sunday of thanksgiving. Churches were nearly empty. So I guess we're just as consistent as the Israelites. One of the things about that first reading that we had, it shows how consistent God is. Do you remember the scene? The people of Israel, they've emerged from their incredible journey out of slavery across the desert. They've had a lot of challenges that they've been confronted with and they've met some they haven't met and now they're beginning to settle in their own land they can till their land they can look after their flocks build their homes raise their families things are looking good and God at that point says to them this is the way to say thank you this is how you can express your appreciation for all that's happened. First, they were to remember that as they settled in their land, who gave them what they had, where it all came from, and they owed it all to God. Next, they were to express their gratitude, their thank you, in tangible ways. Merely saying thank you was not good enough. The way to begin was to remember what they had been. You remember the text? A wandering Arab was my a wandering Arab was my father, ready to perish. Then slavery. Then the desert wanderings. And it was God who led them and brought them into their own land. Not by their skills, not by their cleverness. It was by the mighty hand of God. They'd started out with nothing and now they needed to remember that everything they had and everything they were came from God. And the thanksgiving was to remember where it had all come from. You know, a long time ago now, my goodness, I can't remember how long ago, when I was in Sunday school, we used to sing a little chorus. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. We don't hear that song anymore, but there's something in it. Because we spend so much time reflecting on the things we haven't got, the things we wish we had, and so little time counting our blessings. Maybe that's a good place to start our thanksgiving celebration. So the people of Israel, they would rehearse all of the things that they had received from God, all the ways they'd been blessed, all the good things that had happened, and they were to look for ways to express that in more than merely saying thank you. There's a musical, My Fair Lady, and in that, Eliza sings, don't talk of love, show me. And I think that's what God is saying to the people. Don't just say thank you very much and then carry on. Let's put it into action. First, when you've gathered your harvest in, the very first fruits, you can bring the best and offer it to me.
the best, the choicest, what they would probably prefer to keep, what they would feel most when they offered it. They were to offer that to God, not after everything else had been paid, but off the top, before taxes, no spare change, no what I can spare. Would the people miss it? Would the people miss what they gave? Of course they would. They were meant to. They were meant to notice that they were responding to God's goodness to them. What was it David, King David said many centuries later? He said this, I will not offer to the Lord my God that which costs me nothing. It was going to cost them something to give and say thank you to God. Then says God, when you've done all that, then you can celebrate the blessings, the goodness, the bounty, the generosity of God. And I think that, to me, is the place we begin our Thanksgiving celebrations. And what a joyful celebration it is at the Harvest Festival. I look back on those years uh, as a youngster, as a choir boy. We used to sneak around the church. Don't tell anyone, but we used to sneak around the church and pinch a grape or two and hope we didn't meet the rector, or worse still, if we didn't meet the president of the altar guild. That would be pretty formidable. Well, we used to celebrate, we used to sing out those great hymns, we used to look at the decorations, all symbols of what our lives are and what we are called to be and do. And as we give thanks to God, and God's bounty, as we celebrate, we are in fact offering ourselves. There's a prayer we don't use, well we don't use it at all now if we use the new prayer book. But in the old prayer book there was a prayer right at the end that said, and here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves. That's the only real offering there is. Because when we can offer ourselves, we are truly saying thank you.